When I went into my office at the university last week, I did find a printout of the original uh, visual efficiency scale by Natalie Baraga. So I thought I would just make this very quick practice video and let you see it uh, because it's easier to describe when you can actually see the pictures. So remember, this comes from the uh, original Baraga kit. Uh, it's quite old now, as you can see, 1970, but I still think it's got value, especially if you can't get your hands on the new one that's just come out. And let's face it, none of us can. So there was a link provided in the PowerPoint. You can download it. When you print it out, it's quite an old one that they've scanned. So you'll need to play around with the settings a little bit on a photocopier and get it a bit lighter. It's not actually possible. You can see here, it's just a little bit of sort of um, gray um, on black print. It's not the best contrast, but it's not too bad. Okay, so let's have a look inside. And here we have the first page. Now I'm also just going to um, flip out the answers uh, as well. I know it's going to be really difficult to get them in shot, but there is an answer page as well, which you can fill in as you go along. Now, there are lots of questions, uh, 48 in total, but it is split into four sections, as you can see here, section one, two, three, and four. And we've got the numbers of each question, and the numbers that are beside it are actually the correct answer. So, um, for example, if you look at number one here, it's telling you that the correct answer is three. Yeah, <laughs> just dodgy eyesight. Yes, it says three. Okay, so let's look at the questions. Now, remember, I think I did say if I recorded this lecture, if I can't actually remember if I have or I haven't, um, but when I use this in a service, Few years ago now and um, we had actually chopped up uh, the page so it, they were never presented as an A4 page like this they were cut along these black lines alternatively you can just take a page another sheet of paper and mask it off uh, like this uh, and that means that uh, you're not um, putting the child off by seeing too much at once and also you're eliminating uh, crowding as well so let's just go back. So I did say that it told you that the correct answer was three. So for most of them, but not all, you'll see that there's this black line here. You ask the child to look at this first shape here and then to look along and tell you which one is the same. So yes, the third one along is the square. So that is correct. And you would just write three in your answer sheet. So very easy to score. Uh, and so it continues, um, there are various ones. Now for here, number four, you'll notice there is no um, black line and indeed uh, for uh, number two as well. So number two, fairly simple, you would say which one is different. So that would be that one. And uh, that's the correct answer, just to check it. It's in number four. So always counting uh, from the beginning. If there's no black line, if there is, you would start counting from here. Uh, this one here, you're looking for a specific answer. Tells me the answer is number two. So you'd be asking the child to tell you which one is the cross. So that is a fairly straightforward. Here at the bottom, uh, it's deliberately um, faded. So you're actually asking, again, the child to match according to intensity of uh, colour. So it's almost a bit of contrast that's really being uh, assessed there. But this is not a test uh, purely of contrast. Now, before I go on and show you other pages, I'm going to just slip this one into shot here. So this is the grid that you will complete afterwards. And if I turn it this way, you'll see the things that section one is assessing. So it's looking at discrimination of geometric form, object contour, light dark intensity. So that was like the one I showed you at number six and size and position. 
the numbers here correspond to each question. And in this column here on the left, where my finger is, at the bottom we've got um, questions that are require low efficiency in these skills, marginal efficiency or satisfactory efficiency. So some of them are fairly uh, easy, like number one and number eight, and then getting more uh, complex, five and 12 are really um, perhaps the most challenging ones. And you can see here what they assess. So when you have finished section one, or indeed all of the sections, depending on how long the child can concentrate for, you would mark off which ones were correct and you would see where the areas of weakness are. I just want to show you uh, question 12, because I'm sure you might be curious to know what it involves. And pay careful attention. I will be showing you a question very similar to this in another assessment. It's these surf these uh, shapes here, which one is closest to this one, which one's the same. So um, obviously it's uh, the last one there. And uh, that is the most challenging question in terms of size and position. So that gives you uh, an idea. Moving on, we've got more shapes, finding which one is the same, matching lines. It's getting a little bit more challenging. And here we're looking at discrimination of size, object and as abstract figure detail, position in space, and image constancy. So here we have them again, and, and this one, finding the one that's the same, looking at the axe in number 22 here, and there are pieces of the axe that um, haven't been drawn. So it's, it's visual closure, and it's quite subtle really when you when you look at these pictures in terms of the thickness of the, hang, of the handle and the shape of the blade as well. So you need to look very carefully. Here again, also visual closure, really, when you're looking at the legs of the stool, which one is going to actually be the same as this stool here. And you see this one is, is smaller. Uh, this one has got four legs. Uh, this one here, um, I think the, the leg is uh, drawn actually uh, coming out at the wrong angle. And in fact, it is, um, it is this one here, uh, because this one, the, the leg, third leg is coming out towards the front and this one uh, is really going out towards the back. So slightly tricky as well. Here we've got the picture of the car. Which of these pictures have just not been drawn quite correctly that are going to make this same car? And actually it's, it's number four. So they're not always as simple and as straightforward as they look. In section three, we're moving on to uh, more visual closure, spatial uh, perspective, discrimination of object and abstract figure details. So if you were to put all of these parts together, what would you make? And uh, would be number two. In uh, number 26, uh, this is quite uh, an interesting one. So you've got this part here, which part would it um, slot into to make, uh, would it go together with? And it's a, obviously it's the one at the end. In 28, you're looking for the cuboid. All of the others um, are different perspectives of drawing a cube. So you're looking for the cuboid here. And in 29, you are looking for the cone, which shape is the cone. Moving on from section three, finding the animals. In which shape would you find uh, this line? Uh, which one does it appear in? Um, so it only appears in one of them, in number 33, and that is in number one, I do believe. Oh, 33. Yes, I am correct. I <laughs> looked at the wrong one there. Um, and so on. And 36, uh, you would be finding the letter is the same 
as this B. Now, you wouldn't really want to enlarge this, and um, so you'd have to be very um, careful about which uh, children that you used it with. Maybe those who've got uh, fairly normal acuities, but they're just something that's making you think that they're not learning as well as they might. And uh, again, we, on section four, we move into more print-based um, questions. So we're looking at discrimination of size, position, sequence, and relationship of letter and word symbols and groups of symbols as well. And the last page. So here we're looking at the word that makes this shape and uh, here, quite subtly, it's which word is different. And if the camera is not picking it up, then the S in baseball is back to front in this one here. So this is the one that's different. You'll notice um, that there's not, um, there's not a line here. So you're asking for the one that's different. And in this one, you've got some very cursive writing and you want the child to be able to tell you which one says the same thing in print. So that is the assessment. This is the answer sheet that you would fill in. And then this is the profile page for you then to work out what areas in particular the child was having difficulty and then devising a program to help overcome these difficulties. So I hope you found this useful and I really would urge you to download uh, the Baraga even though it is quite old and perhaps try it out with some children that um, maybe you think well, why are they not learning perhaps in the way that you might expect? And it might show up some difficulties of how they interpret information.